Hey guys, how we doing? Doing all right? Doing all right? Well, good. Thank you, worship team. Good stuff. Hey, before we get going with tonight's message, I um, I'm going to bring out Mr. Michael. Where's Michael at? So put your hands together for Michael. For those who have been around, you know, Michael, you can grab a seat right here. Let's grab you a microphone, Michael. You're going to need that. And it's on. What do you know? So we, we over the last, I don't know, last semester, we did a bunch of them, but we were doing testimonies for a little while. And we haven't done one, I think, in, in a bit. And Michael approached me and was like, hey, I would love to share um, my story. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So... Um, Michael and I have been chatting for a little bit. We've met a couple times. Um, I've heard his story. And normally, like, we just get up here and just let him share. But um, I told him I was going to ask him some questions um, about his life. You ready? Yeah. He's actually got a, a sweet story, guys. Honestly, it's super cool. And I'll say this before I even ask you questions. Like, it's been really cool to get to know you. And I'm really impressed with, like your walk with the Lord and just for the things that I know you're gonna share that the Lord's like calling you to. So first question is this, you told me that you came to know the Lord, right, at an early age. How did that come about? So, so first you gotta hold it close. <laughs> So I, if I get too close, I'll start a loop. <clears throat> um, so I grew up in a family that's very Christ-centered um, to the point where I didn't even realize that I hadn't accepted Christ. Uh, so, sorry, I'm, I'm blanking. <clears throat> Okay, moving forward. Sorry. Well, you told me about the, the Lord yeah. gave you a dream. So tell us about that dream. Yeah, so um, in this dream, I was exploring this like Indiana Jones style temple and I ran into this r gigantic orange cat that I later realized was probably a tiger. <laughs> but for the longest time, it was just like the orange panther dream because I couldn't think of another orange cat that big. <laughs> um, but anyway, as it was chasing me through my dream, it started becoming less of like a temple and started becoming like my house. Uh, going through actual rooms that I remember and you know that feeling when you're about to like you're falling in a dream and you're about to hit the floor but before you hit it you wake up and kind of bounce in your bed and it's like oh shoot I'm glad I landed in my bed I, I didn't get that it, it got me and I woke up swearing I could feel its claws. Um, and so that brought to mind a question. Well, if I died in the dream and I woke up here, when I die here, where am I gonna wake up? And when I went to say, well, heaven, my mind was brought to uh, a bunch of sermons about like the prayer of acceptance and whatnot. And I kind of realized that I had never done that. And I had never even considered going to God in that way. And so I, I kind of broke down. I was like, holy crap. I could have gone my entire life without ever ever actually getting closer to God, you know? So it's like you knew God, but you hadn't actually received Christ is what you're yeah. saying. Um, <clears throat> and this is deep thoughts for like a four-year-old. <laughs> wow, it's young. Uh, but 
in that moment, I just sort of, I broke down and was like, Lord, you are good. I accept, like, I've understood your gift, but here and now I am accepting it and declaring it true. And the peace that came over me immediately. That's cool. It's well, it seems like it's real because even though it was an early age, you're still yeah. up here telling your story of you following Jesus. Yeah. So it's, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So give us a little like backstory, a glimpse as you got older with with like childhood, your life. What did your family dynamics look like to kind of shape well, you? Um. Well, before I was born, uh, my parents. Uh, had some financial issues regarding debt. Finally getting over that, um, they both agreed that they were not going to intentionally acquire debt ever again. Um, and between, You were born and then they acquired debt. <laughs> no. Uh, no, no. The... So, effectively speaking, between that and the, uh, my dad had some unfortunate situations come up as far as, like, his jobs. Um, so between those two factors, we ended up having to move almost every two years, um, to the point where like some of our boxes just never got unpacked and we lived to learn that we uh, we learned to live on a uh, very little and we learned that a lot of what we had wasn't as necessarily as necessary as we first thought and so around 2016 i think I was like 15 or 16. Um, we decided to go full in to a nomadic lifestyle. Um, and that's, that's what we did for five-ish years. Um, I'm just... Sorry, I'm still kind of blanking. Um, so for five years, we just lived on the road, and I could talk your ear off with how many stories of God telling, like, hey, go this way. And when we go that way, we find out, oh, this is exactly what we need. Or <laughs> my, my favorite one that I can tell really shortly is we were pulling into a Walmart, uh, for the night and we get all set up we get all in bed and then someone from the Walmart comes out and starts like shining their light around my dad gets pissed because he thinks we're about to be moved out like moved along but when w when my dad goes up like hey listen we're, we're just trying to like stay for the night um, he's like are you guys okay do, do you need something? Should I call someone? And my dad's like, no, what, why? And he's like, your tire. And our tire was almost entirely gone. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, the trailer tire. Um, so it literally was being, I don't know, held together by angels on the road until we got there, and they just sort of backed off and let it deflate. <laughs> That's crazy. So you had shared with me that that kind of nomadic lifestyle and you guys just journeying had kind of like really shaped even what you're going towards now, right? And it sounded like you had a little bit of a, a little bit of this becoming 18 and like with your dad and some of that stuff, but just kind of share from like, you know, again, what, 
what you, you feel like the Lord's leading to you now since you've experienced that? Yeah, well, it started very much so kind of like a snarky anger, you know, because, you know, that conversation that always happens in some sort of sitcom where it's like, well, if you're not going to be doing anything, you might as well just, like, get out. And then by the end of the episode, they're either proven wrong or learn to accept that the person is lazy. Um, I, me and my dad had an argument like that. And my thought was like, well, what if I did, what if I just packed up a bag and left? I didn't say it, obviously, because I knew I was just being mad. But it would keep coming back. Like, three days later, I'm just sort of overthinking it. Two weeks later, I'm really overthinking it. After about two years, I'm starting to get a little paranoid. Like, why is this thought keep coming up? Like, just grab what you can carry and leave. And so when me and my mom got talking about... Uh, like what I was gonna do, I I kind of brought it up. Like, I mean, I, I think it's like an intrusive thought at that point. But then she opened up about something that had happened like earlier in her life, like before she married my dad, where she was gonna go out and do a backpacking ministry sort of deal. And at the, at the same time as being terrified, it started to sound right. And once it started to sound like, I could do that, I should do that. Oh shit, that's what I'm gonna be doing, isn't it? <laughs> and then ever since then, it's just been confirmation after confirmation. Like, at this point, I can't stop thinking for more than 10 seconds without it coming up in my head like, the Lord is with you in this. Or every time I open my Bible, uh, it opens up to a verse that's either uh, directly mentioning foreshadowing or otherwise enforcing the great commission of go make disciples. We've been going over like uh, getting back to the basics for however long, I forget. But effectively speaking, that's this is exactly the course I needed to do and that's another confirmation of like, I need to get back to the basics. I need to I need to be reading my Bible way more often. And so, yeah, it's just cool. been confirmation after <clears throat> confirmation. And just for sake of clarity, so everybody picks up on this, is like that, that lifestyle basically has led you to be like, I'm, I'm feeling called to like pack up and the Lord's calling me to go like live with the underprivileged and, and homeless yeah. people and backpack around and share the gospel. Yeah, so for... For greater clarity, um, I am leaving tomorrow to go and live kind of literally on the streets. And I've just been, I've been praying about this for so long. And every time I come to the Lord, like, hey, here's an option B I could do and it could still be like a mobile ministry like maybe if I got a van or a truck or something um, it was always not yet and so starting the 6th? yeah, starting on the 6th I will be living in a very I will be completely relying on the Lord, walking, ho hopefully walking on water. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully no. I don't end up in a fish like Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I wanted him to share his story, A, just so you get to know him, right? And, and everybody has a story, which I think is really rad. But his, his story is very different than most of our stories. And I, was, I had this dialogue with him about plan B. And it wasn't, I was like, well, what about plan B? And what about this? And I was like trying to talk him off the ledge, so to speak. And he, the way he articulated it and told me is like, he really feels called to this. And I wanted you guys to hear that. And just so you guys could be praying for him and that we could pray for him. Um, but thank you for, for sharing with us. And I wanna pray for you right now of just like that the Lord would, you know, be with you and yeah, that he would allow you to, you know, meet people and serve people and share the gospel with people. Cause that's basically like what you're doing while you're, you're called to this. So if you guys just wanna stick out a hand, let's just pray for, for Michael. And uh, again, thanks for being able to share. So Father, thank you for, um, just Michael be able to come up here and share a little bit about himself and his, his background and how he came to you. And Lord, you called him at a very young age. And Lord, he continues to, to learn about you and to grow in you and to, to ultimately right now be called to be sent out by you. And so Lord, I just pray that his time would be really, really fruitful. God, that he would learn so many things. And Lord, I know it's gonna have its peaks and valleys, but Lord, that you would give him the strength that he needs, the endurance that he needs, the boldness that he needs. And Lord, however long you have called him to do this, Lord, I just pray that you would make that clear. Um, but God, ultimately, that he would just take this and just make it such a, an amazing part of his life that he can look back on. Um, so Lord, walk with this with this man. We know that you will. Pray this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, give it up, you guys, for Michael for sharing. Well, hey guys, it's super good to, to be here with you tonight. We are gonna get rocking and rolling um, back into our Back to Basics series. Kind of interesting day for me. A, <clears throat> I've still been fighting, as you can kind of hear like the raspiness in my voice, still been fighting, um, not feeling 100%, which is not always fun. So um, we've all been there. 